Good morning. Welcome to worship. Youth will worship at the Connection Church with their youth at 6 p.m. Meet at their church. Either have your parents drive you or drive yourself. Trustees will meet this Wednesday at 7 in the archives room. Heritage Community Worship Service will take place this Thursday at 6 p.m. Anyone who would like to go worship with Pastor Dave and the residents is more than welcome to do so. They love to have visitors. Vacation Bible School coming right up. This will take place July 17th to 20th from 9 a.m. to noon for children ages 4 through 6th grade and children who are age 3 and attend our church. Register your child online using the link found on our Facebook page. <laughs> if you would like to help at VBS, get in touch with Lacey Johnston or Connie Taylor. License plates. There are free Guymon for Christ license plates at the back of the sanctuary for anyone to take. Grab one on your way out today. Ladies Bible study. Woohoo! Meets Wednesdays at <laughs> Meets Wednesdays at 6 and Thursdays at 10 a.m., both down in the fellowship hall. This is a great group of women, and they invite you to join them. Yes, yes. However, we're not meeting this summer. The, the evening group isn't meeting um, every Wednesday this summer. We're meeting randomly, sometimes for dinner, sometimes for visiting, maybe a craft, whatever Rebecca conjures up for us. So, um, Methodist Men's Breakfast. Yum, yum is held every Wednesday morning from 6.30 to 7.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Invite a friend and join them for good food, fellowship, and devotion. Yes, yes. And I always think this should say in a hard time, because oh, I yeah. that's, that, that's a free, a, a given. Uh -huh. Early Watch Prayer Group meets for fellowship, worship, and intercession Monday through Saturday mornings, 5 to 6 a.m. in the chapel. And Later Watch Prayer Group Meets on Monday evenings at 6 p.m. in the chapel. Come and join either group when you can. Later watch David Jenkins' woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Visitors, please leave your contact information on one of the visitor cards found in your pew. Pastor Dave would like to follow up with you and thank you for being here. Yes, yes. Newsletter, if you would like to receive our twice a month newsletter, please get in touch with the church office so we can add you to our mailing list. Class meetings, please visit with Pastor Dave about ways you can belong and participate to a covenant prayer and share group. Yes. Daily devotions, Pastor Dave encourages everyone to enjoy a quiet time with God each day. God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. please join me in the call to worship. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Spirit, there is none like you. You created all, you provide for all, and you sustain all. You are the great I am who is seated on the great white throne, and the earth and the heavens flee from your holy presence. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is full of your glory. Lord Jesus, you are the eternal Son of God, our Savior and Lord. We are forgiven and made holy through your atoning sacrifice in the Holy Spirit you sent to fill us. Holy, 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 Lord God, God Almighty, the whole earth is full of your glory. Holy Spirit, you are the life giver and the divine teacher. You sanctify us and lead us into all truth, reminding us of all that Jesus taught. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is full of your glory. We honor you, blessed triune God, by believing you, receiving you, and obeying you. We choose to repent and purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body, soul, and spirit. Please establish truth and holiness in us through your word, spirit, and grace. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, the whole earth is full of your glory. Holy God, Father, Son, and Spirit, who among the gods is like you, Lord. You are majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, the omnipotent one who works wonders. You alone can make us your holy sons and daughters. We give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory that you deserve. Thank you, Mitzi. Great job. 
Let's all stand together and sing, I Surrender All. You may be seated. Wonderful to see each of you worshippers with us this morning. When I was visiting with Mitzi a few minutes back, she said, you can see it's summer. We have lots of our families away on vacation, taking trips, of course, over the weekends, and uh, we wish them well. We, I pray for them. I pray for safe travels and a refreshing time together as couples and as families that they'll come back with their batteries on full charge. Nice to have Jimbo and Vicky off to their little getaway. And each of you, may God bless you during these summer months. Of course, what we do here on a Sunday is not the only worship that we do. Believers, Christians are worshipers every day, all day, as we worship the living God. But there is something unique and beautiful about us gathering like this for what we call corporate worship, where the body of Christ becomes visible as we see all of us gathered together singing God's songs, 
reading God's Word, listening to the voice of His Holy Spirit, fellowshipping with one another. What a sweet gift this kind of worship is. I'm reminded of when we had COVID and we had to shut down for two months and how difficult those two months were. We were doing online worship. And then that first Sunday in June, we opened back up and we were spaced out every other pew. But as people showed up, there was a corporate smile all across the sanctuary. There was a sense of joy and euphoria as we were able to be together, worshiping as the body of Christ in person. And so it should be. It's a beautiful thing to be the family of God. And every time we gather in this way, it's like a family reunion. So welcome to worship, Zach. Good to see you up there. Uh, Amber, good to see you. I didn't get a chance to say hello to you up there in the balcony. Um, Donnie, good to see you. And Valerie, good to see you. Each one, I try to have time to say hello to each of you. I don't always get around to each one. But just know that you are loved and welcomed. And it's a joy to be gathered in this way each and every Sunday. Our theme today is honoring God. And we'll kind of dig in and see what that means and how we can go about honoring God with our daily lives and especially as we worship together in this way. So join me in our prayer in unison as we explore this wonderful theme of honoring God. Beloved Heavenly Father, we acknowledge and we confess that you alone are God. There is no other. You are holy, compassionate, and amazing. We stand in awe of who you are and what you do. Thank you for your mercy, patience, and goodness towards us. We celebrate the new life and promising future we have in Jesus, your beloved Son. You have saved us from sin and death, making us your holy children by clothing us in the righteousness of Christ, our Lord. Heavenly Father, you are more precious to us than our family, our friends, our possessions, and yes, even our very lives themselves. We surrender all we have and all we are to you. We honor you and we praise you with our thoughts, words, and actions. Be exalted and elevated above all. We want to worship you in all we think, say, and do. Amen. As the ushers come forward, we'll receive tithe, offering, and faith promise gifts this morning. Our stewardship reflection comes out of Luke chapter 3, reading from verse 7. John, and this is John the baptizer or the Baptist. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers. What a greeting. You snakes slithering down here to the water. You brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these very stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The ax is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then? The crowd asked. John answered, anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none. And anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay, one for you. Let us pray. Lord, without you we are in trouble. We stand under your wrath and judgment because we all sin and fall short of your glory. 
and we cry out with the crowd, what shall we do? Thank you that you have sent us a wonderful Savior, Jesus. Thank you that there's forgiveness in his name. Thank you that in him we are made new, and we celebrate that today. Lord, we pray as we give, we can give joyfully, generously, as an expression of our love and our thanks. And Lord, we pray that you would raise up Victory Memorial to be a blessing center, that anyone who comes and is a part of what we are and what we do, that they would know you and learn to love you and serve you. Make us a bright, shining Christ light. We pray it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Please stand together, let's sing our doxology and give God praise. may be seated. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Cindy Jenkins. And of course, David, Pastor David Jenkins, both Cindy and David are accomplished violinists. And we are so glad to have them as a part of our worshiping community and serving community. So glad to have Cindy back. She's been running back and forth to help her mom who broke her hip and had surgery and is convalescing. Please keep Jean Key Cindy's mom, in your prayers, she recently, in fairly recent past, lost her husband and then had that fall and broken hip and has had a real struggle for these past months. Keep her in your prayers. So glad to have you, David, and Cindy with us. Thank you for that beautiful offertory. We're going to listen to our choir as they share with us a beautiful anthem that they have prepared for us. Um, you raise me up. Thank you.
Thank you, choir. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Gayla. Blessings to you as you worship and lead us in worship. If our children will come forward, we'll have a children's conversation together. We are very glad to see each of you with us in worship today. God loves it when we worship. And there are different ways to worship. We can sing. We can come and visit together, have friends. That's part of worship. We read God's Word. That's worship. We share God with other people. And that's worship. We put God right at the middle of our lives. Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about honoring how do we honor? The Bible says you must honor your mom and dad, your parents. Honor your parents. So, I wonder what that means. What does honoring mean? Any idea? Bless you, that's a bad cough. Well, I'm going to help you this morning. Honoring means that you make something important. Now, for all of us, having breakfast can be important, or lunch. If you're hungry, or supper, or dinner, supper, that's important. Or if you want to be smart and educated, you've got to go to school. school. School is important. And if you want to have a fun time, you need friends. Friends are important, right? Where you can go fishing, or hunting, or you can go dancing, or you can go play baseball, or shoot hoops in your backyard. That's fun, and we all like to do that. But the Bible says you've got to make your mom and your dad important to honor them. So what things do we do that let mom and dad know that they're important? What do moms and dads like? Well, I think moms and dads like it, especially when you give them Hugs and kisses. kisses. Yeah, they, they know that you care about them. And when you give mom and dad a big hug and a kiss, glad to see them. My little boy, when he was little, when I came home, he'd come running, just like you were running up here. And he'd put his arms around me and I'd pick him up and I'd swing him around. He was glad to see me and I was glad to see him. But there are other ways you show your mom and dad they're important. If they tell you to do something, you must do it. You must do it. You must mind you must mind. You must obey. When you obey, you tell mom and dad, you're honoring them. They're important. When you don't obey, when you, when you disrespect them, that is dishonoring. That causes them to feel sad and even mad. If we disobey and we dishonor, they might have to get the, the paddle and, and help you mind. Huh? All right. But it's not just mom and dad. The Bible says God wants us to honor Him. God wants us to make Him important. God wants us to show Him that He's valuable. Now let's talk about what is valuable. When a lady gets married, she normally gets a, a ring. And normally, with the engagement and the marriage, the ring's made out of gold, maybe, and it's got a diamond, and it's costly, it's... Lots of money. And so a wife will normally look at that ring and say, Ooh, that's really valuable. I don't want to lose it. If a wife loses her ring, oh, give, give you a heart attack because it's valuable. Now God says, I want to be valuable. I want to be important. So how do we show God he's valuable and important? We pray for him. We pray to him and for him. And we pray for others. And praying is talking to God. It's like coming home and giving a big hug. When you pray and listen to God, it's you showing God, God, you're important. You're valuable. And when we come to, what is this? What do we call conversation. Kids' conversation and worship. We tell God, God, you're important. 
you're valuable. And when you have a quiet time with God every day, when you read his, read his Bible so you can know him, and when you speak to him, he says, Aha, I can see Charter knows I'm important. Charter knows I'm valuable. David is taking me seriously. And if we don't have quiet time, and if we don't worship, and if we do things that God said, don't do that, you know what we're saying to God? You're not important. You're not valuable. I'm going to do what I want to do, and I don't care about you. And that hurts the heart of God. And it can make God mad. And you and I don't ever want to make God mad because it doesn't turn out good. God loves us, and he wants us to do well. And the only way you and I can do well is if we honor God every day, telling him he's important and valuable, even more valuable than a wedding ring, even more important than going to school, even more important than a mom or a dad or a best friend. God is our number one. He is most important. This is what Jesus said. I'm going to stop with this. Seek me first. Before your friends, before mom and dad, before a job or a wedding ring or anything else, make me your first priority. I must be most important of all the things that are important. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for our children. We are so glad to see them in worship. We are yet to tell you, God, you are important. You are valuable. We love you. And we want to do things that please you. Help us each and every day to tell you again and again that you are important. You are valuable. And we love you. And all God's children said aloud. No, aloud. Amen. You can go back to your seats. We are glad you are with us. I'm reminded of what Jesus said, whatever you do for the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you do for me. What an incredible statement that is, that there's nothing that you and I do toward God or toward others that God doesn't notice, as if you were doing it for him personally. Amazing. All right, join me in our prayer for illumination. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. Today we're going to read a couple of different scriptures. The lesson is actually much bigger than we have time to read. Once again, I hope you will go back and maybe read the whole passage that deals with Hezekiah, but we're going to start with 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, declares, I promised that members of your family would minister before me forever. But now the Lord declares, far be it from me, those who honor me I will honor, but those who despise me will be disdained. What a warning that is, and what an encouragement to honor God. And now, hear what Jesus says in John chapter 12, verse 26. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will also be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now, a couple of passages out of Second Kings, reading out of verse... 1 to 7 of chapter 18 and 1 to 7 of chapter 19. In the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, Hezekiah, son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother's name was Abijah, daughter of Zechariah. 
He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and I want to pause there. A lot is being said in that statement that Hezekiah did what was right in God's eyes. He understood who God was. He learnt what pleased God, and he did it. His life was right with God. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father David had done. He removed the high places, and I must pause there. High places were places of worship that were idolatrous, to no gods, to demonic gods, other than the God of Israel. Every altar, every high place, Hezekiah removed, destroyed. He smashed the sacred stones, anything that had been dedicated as a memorial or an altar to idols, Hezekiah smashed, destroyed, made sure they were not around. He cut down the Asherah poles, kind of like totem poles, these sacred Asherah poles, phallic symbols back in that culture, really obscene in the eyes of God. He cut them down and destroyed them. He broke into pieces the bronze snake Moses had made. Remember Moses had a serpent, a snake, and if you looked at it, you could be healed. After that, they started worshiping the snake as an idol, like it was some talisman or sacred object. So Hezekiah cut that bronze snake into pieces, for up to that time the Israelites had been burning incense to it, like it was some sacred presence or a idol. Hezekiah trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel. There was no one like him among the kings of Judah, either before him or after him. I want to pause there. Not only did he do what was right, but he trusted his life, his kingship, his future into the hands of God. He made God his treasure, his focus, entrusting himself into the God of Israel. And because of that, the Bible tells us that there was not a king like him before or after. He held fast to the Lord and did not stop following him. When I read that, I was reminded of my days of water skiing. You hold on to that rope and the boat starts pulling you. And if you're not very good at coming out of the water, it feels like you're going to dislocate your shoulders. You've got to keep holding on to that rope until finally you can pop out of the water and hopefully you don't spill and fall down right as soon as you've got up out of the water. But uh, it says that Hezekiah held fast to God. He wouldn't let go. He made sure that his relationship with God was number one. He kept the commands the Lord had given Moses. And the Lord was with him. He was successful in whatever he undertook. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. When King Hezekiah heard this, this is a little time later, the king of Assyria is not very happy with him and he's coming to destroy him and all of Judah. And all kinds of threats have been made against Hezekiah and his people. When King Hezekiah heard this, he tore his clothes. That's a sign of grief and distress, tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and went into the temple of the Lord. In our day, that would be like coming here to the sanctuary, maybe kneeling here at the altar, seeking God's face, saying, oh God, what are we going to do? Hezekiah tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, went into the presence of God and said, God, this is a bad day. We're in trouble. What are we going to do? He sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shebna, the secretary, and the leading priests, all wearing sackcloth, to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos. He's kind of like the pastor, the prophetic voice. They told him, this is what Hezekiah says, this day is a day of distress and rebuke and disgrace, as when children come to the moment of birth and there is no strength to deliver them like a woman who's going to try to give birth to a child but can't, and the baby's going to die. That's how terrible things have become. 
It may be that the Lord your God will hear all the words of the field commander whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to ridicule the living God and that he will rebuke him for the words the Lord your God has heard. Therefore pray for the remnant that still survives. When King Hezekiah's officials came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, tell your master, tell the king, tell Hezekiah, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid of what you have heard, those words with which the underlings of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Listen, when he hears a certain report, I will make him want to return to his own country. And there I will have him cut down with a sword. This is the word of the Lord. A couple of questions for you to think about. Maybe you can discuss them with your family and friends. How do you honor God? As you think about your own life, what do you do each day that shows God that is important, that lets him know he's valuable in your life? Number two, what actions or attitudes demonstrate honor? What do you say or do that shows that kind of honor toward God and to others? And number three, what actions or attitudes show disrespect and dishonor? What do we do or fail to do that sends a message? You're not important. You're not valuable. As I was preparing for the sermon this week, a little song came back to mind. Thank God for music. Thank God for these songs that capture the faith. Little song goes, the greatest thing in all my life is knowing you. The second verse goes, the greatest thing in all my life is loving you. And the third verse goes, the greatest thing in all my life is serving you. When you read through Judges and through First and Second Kings and Chronicles, when you come to Hezekiah, he is remarkable. Because as you read, you'll hear again and again, the kings did what was evil in the eyes of God. The kings and the people forgot God. They did the things that God asked them not to do. They made God angry, and God gave them over. Their enemies would soon become powerful and dominate them. Their lives would become miserable, and all because they dishonored God. They forgot God. They turned their backs and did the very things that God asked them not to do. But when you come to Hezekiah, this is what you will hear. The greatest thing in all my life is knowing you. The greatest thing in all my life is loving you. The greatest thing in all my life is serving you. And this is how he showed it. Where the other kings tolerated all of the obscene practices of Judah, he did not. Every high place he destroyed, as God had asked him to. Do not copy your neighbors. Do not get involved in pagan worship. Do not do these things, these obscene things that I've asked you not to do. And so he did it. He destroyed every one of those altars and high places that were an offense to God, that grieved God. He said, we're not going to do that. And then he made sure that every idol or expression of an idol was destroyed. It became so well known that the king of Assyria said, what's this king doing? He's lost his mind. He's destroying all the altars. He's destroying all their gods. What he didn't know is they were not the God of Israel. They were not the God of that southern kingdom, Judah. There was only one God and he was not an idol. He was invisible, but he was real and powerful. In fact, when the threats come against Hezekiah, this is what the king says, the Assyrian king. Don't think for a minute that your God can protect you 
Don't think for a minute that you're going to stand up against me and my army. We have destroyed one nation after another and you're next. But this is what happens. His words are heard by the living God. His blasphemies are heard by the living God. And the poor king, who knows he's hopelessly outmatched, there's no way in the world he can stand against that army. This is a bad day, a dark day, a frightening day. So frightening he tears his clothes and he puts on sackcloth and he goes straight to the, to the sanctuary. And he gets on his knees before God and he says, God, what are we going to do? Show me what to do. The king later on gets a letter, a threatening letter from the king and his emissaries. And he opens the letter before God. Read what they're saying, what they're going to do. What we're going to do, Lord? There will come things in your life and mine when you don't know which way to turn. A dark day, a bad day, a difficult day. A life-threatening illness, a loss of a loved one, a job that's gone south, a disease that doesn't let up. I hope you will join Hezekiah in going straight into the presence of God and laying it out before you and saying, God, what are we going to do? What are we, you and I, what are we going to do, Lord? And he listens for God's reply, and he gets a reply. Isaiah is a man of God, one who knows God and hears from God. And he says, you tell the king, he's got nothing to fear. I will take that king and I will turn him around and get him back to where he came from. Not an arrow will be shot here in Jerusalem. You will not have to defend yourself. In fact, I will cut him down with a sword. His threats against you will turn against him. And sure enough, the king returns back to Assyria. And there his own sons murder him. This most powerful king with the most powerful army who was ready to pounce on little Judah and stomp them in the ground. Except he didn't know who he was dealing with. It wasn't Hezekiah, and it wasn't the people of Judah. It was with the living God, whom Hezekiah had acknowledged, whom Hezekiah had got to know, who Hezekiah loved, who Hezekiah trusted. And this is what God said, anybody who honors me, I will honor. I will protect. You have nothing to fear. I'll take care of the king of Assyria and all of his underlings. And just like God said, he did. If God said it, you can believe it. And he says, I'm not a man that I will lie or go back on my word. I will do what my word has promised. And he does. I want you to know that this is a frightening moment in Hezekiah's life. He knows he's hopelessly outmatched. Unless God comes through, there's no hope. That's a tough place to be. Monty, it's like when you get to the end of your rope and all you've got left is to tie a knot into the end of the rope and hang on to the knot because if I let go, it's over. God is that knot and he's more than enough. Not just to save you, but the people you love and the nation you're a part of. Hezekiah is not just crying out for himself, he's crying out for his people. He's crying out for the remnant. And God delivers. Listen to me, folks. God delivers. Anyone who trusts him, anyone who loves him, anyone who honors him, who lets him know how they live, that he is important and valuable, and that they put their lives in his hands. He will say again and again, do not be afraid. I am with you. Again and again and again, read it in Scripture. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. I am with you. Stories told, true story of a little girl, a little elementary age girl in Sunday school. And the Sunday school teacher was teaching on that day about honoring, 
honoring God. And the gist of the lesson was, when we become useful, available, we then can start doing things that are honoring, that are helpful. And of course, the Sunday school teachers shared with the students that, for instance, if mom is setting the table, you can say, can I help? And that's a one way of honoring your mom or your dad. Or if there are dishes that need to be washed, can I help? What can I do? Or if you're a young man like Charter over there, I'll take out the trash. That's a way of honoring. And when they ask you to go to bed or brush your teeth and you do it, that's a way of honoring. Great. The, the students got it. And then little Sarah said at the end of the Sunday school lesson, but how about God? I mean, how do I honor God? And the teacher reached over and grabbed hold of a little vase that was empty and said, well, you could get a flower and put it in an empty vase like this as a way of telling God that you picked that flower for him and you acknowledge him and you're honoring him. She said, oh, okay. And sure enough, the next week, the little girl came with a flower, put water in that empty vase and put the flower in. The teacher was quite impressed. She had just given that as an example, not as an instruction to do, but the little girl took that to heart and put the flower in. And the next week, she brought another flower and threw the old one away and put another flower in. And every week after that, little Sarah would bring a flower to Sunday school and would put it in the vase. This impressed the Sunday school teacher so much that she shared it with a pastor. And one Sunday, little Sarah saw up there next to the pulpit the vase with her flower. And the pastor shared, we've got a little girl, yeah, a little Sunday school girl who decided she was going to honor God and she's been doing that by bringing a flower for God to honor him, to thank him. And so I wanted to bring the little vase with a flower and I really appreciate her heart and what she's doing. It was a good example of something small, practical that we can do that lets God know you're important, you're valuable. It reminded me of my mom. My mom loved flowers, especially roses. And she said to me, don't wait for my birthday. Anytime you want to bring flowers, I'll be glad to receive them. I enjoy them every time. And every time I look at them, they bring me joy. So I would, I would often take my mom flowers just to let her know that I loved her and she was important to me. I wish she was around today. I would take her flowers. I picked flowers for my wife from the garden. Well, little Sarah did that just to let God know. And then... Sadly, some months later, Sarah got sick, and when they were finished the tests, they found out she had leukemia. And we know that most people that are diagnosed with leukemia have limited time left, and that's what happened to little Sarah. She got weaker and sicker. They treated her, but they couldn't beat the leukemia, and eventually she couldn't come to church anymore. She was so weak, she was at home. But one Sunday, two, three weeks later, she showed up in church with a little blanket. Her little body was emaciated. She brought her flower, put it in the vase, and three days later, she passed away. And at the funeral, there was the pastor and the doctor who had been her, her family physician. He was in the church. He was there, and all the people were there. It was a very sad funeral. And after the funeral, as people were leaving, the pastor went to the physician and he said, I wanted to share something with you. When Sarah brought her last flower, she wrote a little note. And she wrapped it around the flower and she put a little rubber band around it. And I've got the note. I want to read it to you. And this is what the little note said. Bringing a flower every Sunday has been the greatest honor of my life toward God. And he said, I think you're going to need that because you're going to see many people like this and I'm going to see some along the way who are suffering, struggling, dying. And there's a way that we can connect with God and honor Him and our lives have meaning even beyond our sickness or death. And that was true for Sarah and it's true for you. It's true for me. If we live in a practical way every day that says to God, you're important, you're valuable. And the greatest thing in all my life is knowing you and loving you and serving you. And even when you die, and die you will, and I will too, 
Hear me again this morning, it's not the end. Like Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, it's just the beginning of life. We have finished this part, and now eternity opens up to you and me. And that's what Hezekiah discovered. And he honored God, and he defied the greatest empire and the greatest king in his life, the king of Assyria. And that king was mad as you know what, and ready to stomp him in the ground, except he didn't know that there is a true and living God, and it isn't one of the idols that he had been so successful in defeating. But when he came toe-to-toe with the living God, he was in for a rude surprise. There is no force on this earth, there is no king or kingdom that is a match for the living God. And God says to you and me, and God asks you and me to honor him. And if you honor me, I will honor you. I hope that you and I will have plenty of room in our lives each day to say to God, whether it's with a flower or reading his word or listening to his voice or sharing his love with another, God sees each of those acts. He doesn't miss a one. This is what Jesus said, my final thought. Anyone who even serves a cup of cold water in my name, he notices and he honors. As you live, as you love, as you serve, in his name, he takes note and he honors your love and your service. Let us pray. Lord, we want to join little Sarah in asking you, how do I honor God? What can I do for God? And everything we do is something, an opportunity that can honor you. Every word spoken, every gift given, every opportunity to express our thanks, our joy, our appreciation. We are not just serving others, we are serving you. And we pray today that your love and your goodness would fill us and would express itself through us. Help us to join little Sarah in offering you a flower, as it were, and saying, Lord, this is for you, because you are important, and you are valuable in my life, no matter what's going on around me. We pray it in Jesus' name, and everybody said? Amen. Amen. We'll remain seated as we sing, He Hideth My Soul.
Michelle, Moses wanted to see God. You know why? Because he loved God. And he honored God with his life. He wanted to know him even better. And God said, yeah, you can have a glimpse, but it'll just be the back of me. I'll have to kind of cover you. You know why? Because we couldn't see God as mortals and live. And as God passed by, Moses caught a glimpse. Here's my challenge to each of you. Logan, take God seriously. Honor him with your life. May he hear from you each and every day the way you live. I want to know you. I want to love you. I want to serve you. No matter what's going on around you, no matter how young you are or old you are, no matter how things are going in your favor or against you, may you join Hezekiah, may I join Hezekiah in saying, I'm going to serve God no matter what, even if things turn out bad, a bad day. The king of Assyria wants to kill me because I will not do what he wants me to do. Do not be afraid. God will take care of you. We're going to sing together as the deer as we prepare to intercede for others. Dale Moore fell, broke his hip. He got a a pin put in that hip yesterday is at Southwest Medical Center. Let's think about and pray for Dale Moore. And Donna goes in for surgery tomorrow. Donna Henshi. Let's think of Donna. Warren is recovering nicely, right, Mitzi? Getting stronger, getting out a little bit. Let's remember Warren in our prayers. Cheyenne Woods, who's got pretty extensive cancer, is going to go for surgery on her abdomen. Let's remember her in our prayers. Let's remember Linda Hitch, who fell and broke her hip, was on a ventilator, taken off, not doing very well. Let's remember Linda. Our beloved Beth Thayer lost her mom last night. Let's remember Beth Thayer and Clark as they grieve the loss of Judy, her mom. Many people who need us to pray stand in the gap. Let's sing together as the deer. If you'd like to come and kneel here at the chancel rail, please feel free to do so. I can remember kneeling back in 1977 as I yielded my life to Christ the first time. 
come into my life. If you'll have me, I'm giving myself to you, Lord. Not much here, but I'm giving you what I have. Thank God he took what I offered, touched me, changed me, made me a new creation. Hallelujah. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Whoever receives Christ will become a child of the living God, a new creation. Whoever wants what God is offering will receive freely from God. Lord, we want to be a people who honor you in practical ways every day. We want to say to you, you're important. We value you when we have a quiet time, when we share you with others, when we come to worship, when we serve in your name. We want to do it because we love you, Lord. You're important. More important than our own lives, more important than our families or our jobs or our hobbies. You are number one. We pray for Warren Peterson. Give him a full recovery. Be with Dale Moore as he recovers from his surgery. Struggling, 93 years old. Got to get more and more help. Not easy for us men. We're pretty hard-headed and independent. Help Dale make the adjustment. Be with Cheyenne Woods as she fights this cancer. Be with Donna Henshi as she goes in for surgery. Be with Linda Hitch as she's struggling, Lord. Be with our beloved Jean Key as she's convalescing and adjusting to not having her beloved Jim with her. It's tough getting old, not for sissies. It's hard, Lord. Be with our members at the manor and the heritage. We wrap them up in our love and praise. Thank you for the rain. Woo! What a difference it's made. Protect our marriages. Help us to cherish each other. Be with our loved ones who are lost or addicted or in a difficult circumstance. We pray for them. Protect our youth, Lord. We want our young people to know you and serve you. May we walk in the footsteps of Hezekiah. Pray for Gaiman that a fresh wind of your spirit would blow through this panhandle, that you would pour out your wonderful spirit and blessing upon us, and that we would use it to share you with others. As we pray the prayer you taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have a special YouTube music video as we reflect on God's goodness. It's called Canyons. And you can follow along. The words are in your bulletin. If you know the words, sing along. Corey Asbury, a beautiful reminder of God's love as we think about serving Him and helping others along the way. Please receive God's blessing and God's challenge as you go into the mission field that God has called you and me to serve. Now to Him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or think according to the power at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm.